How's it going? As you probably know, I do a lot of live streams. And I totally understand that not everybody has two hours to sit down and watch a whole live stream. But in those live streams, there is a lot of good information. This video is a condensed version of the last live stream, where I put together what I thought were the most important points in a much more manageable amount of time. Ready? Here we go. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. A lot of my favorite projects use custom PCBs, like the BH Onofre, all of the Quinn LED boards, and the HA switch plate. Ordering from PCBWay is pretty easy, and they're always running some kind of special, so you can be pretty sure that you're getting a good deal. They deliver fast, but most importantly, it's good quality stuff. So if you've got a project that needs custom PCBs, check out PCBWay. One of the questions that I get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, is uh, how many LEDs can I run from one Node MCU? The answer is, eh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the answer from Air Cookie, his recommendation was like 500, I think he said, five or 600. I wanted to kind of show what happens and or if anything bad would happen. And I don't think anything bad is gonna happen. What we're gonna do is run 750 LEDs and see what happens. So this is uh, 750 and there's no problems right now. There's nothing wrong, everything's working fine. We can scroll through some of the effects Dynamic doesn't really move very much. It moves a little bit. We could make it move more. Here's running. Okay, so it's it's handling 750 fine so far. This is gonna strobe. Ah, sorry. Oh, there it goes. Colorful. That is pretty. That is just pretty. Red and blue. These LEDs look so good. So, so far so good, not having any troubles at all. It's running 750 fine. Now I actually have here one more thing we can attach. I've got here also a matrix that has another 250. So should we plug that in and see if we can get that to run as well? There we go. There's the matrix as well. So now we've got over a thousand LEDs. Let's go back to the effects and we'll do some stuff. Are they connected in series or parallel? They're connected in series for data. They're connected in parallel for power. Wow, current estimated usage is unknown. I guess it runs out of bounds there. Oh, down here, current estimated usage, unknown. Oh, I think maybe it's because of this. Oh, there it goes. So when it's set to 65,000, I think he just picked that number as a number that probably nobody would ever want to go over. And maybe when you do that, it stops estimating. I wonder if it changes by the effect. Colorful with the high saturation. Now let's look at the estimated current again, see if it changed. This whole desk is getting warm. <laughs> so yeah, there you go, it does change. That's awesome, so this current estimated usage changes based on the effect that you're running. Got a fire extinguisher nearby? Yeah, I actually do. Ow, that's hot. We're gonna turn this down a second, hold on, hold on. Uh, back to the initial experiment though for a second. Having a thousand LEDs on one Node MCU seemed to work fine. There's probably some point where it's gonna fail. Some of the faster effects may not look right. The FPS drops, that's probably true. Node MCU plus 750 LEDs were drawing 0.6 amps. So what happens if I turn on 750 LEDs running Color Winkle? Look at that already. Woo! Maybe what we'll do, since this is already at four and a half amps, and this is not a very intense effect, let's cut down the LEDs. Do some experimenting here with our 150 LEDs. We're gonna do some different effects. Dynamic, let's put the brightness all the way up, 2.7. Let's see if we can get it up higher with any of these effects. Uh, colorful, 4.4. 4.4 divided by 150, what's that? So we're at 30 milliamps. Let's get to business here. Let's go solid. Different colors are gonna have different current draws. There's green. There's sort of a light blue, 3.6 amps. Straight blue, four and a half for pink. Red is lower, 2.8. Orange is gonna be up there again a little as we go up in shades here of yellow towards white. Now let's do it. Here we go, maxing out. Full white, full brightness, 150 LEDs, 5.26 amps. Somebody do that math. 35. The next very common question that I've had on LEDs is, 
can you show the 12 volt wiring again? Like how do you do the 12, the wiring when you have 12 volt LEDs? This is 12 volt power. I've got it hooked up to a 12 volt, two amp power supply that I'm going to plug that in to the input side of the DC DC converter. When you're running 12 volt LEDs, you need one of these of some kind or another. You can use this kind. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. Some of them are cheaper. Some of them are more expensive. I think from AliExpress, this one is about $2 if I remember right. Step one, connect 12 volts to the input side of your DC DC converter. The other thing to do is I'm connecting wires to the output side. So 12 volts goes in, five volts comes out. So these two here are gonna go to the power of my Node MCU. So I'm gonna power this like that. So now I've got the five volt output, positive and negative, going to V in and ground on my Node MCU. Okay, so 12 volts comes in, five volts goes out. To power my LEDs, they usually give you these extra connectors. Uh, I'm gonna use one of those on the 12 volt side. So see, those are connected to 12 volts. I've got the ground on the ground and the red positive 12 volts on the positive. And that's what's gonna connect to my LEDs. This is the data. So this is gonna connect to D4 over here, connected. Now I just need some LEDs, 12 volt LEDs. I'm just gonna connect this to here. I don't, right now I don't need these extra two wires. I could use those to connect here, but it doesn't matter. As long as I've got 12 volts and ground going to the LEDs and five volts going to the Node MCU. Now, some people have had troubles if the ground that is going to your controller is not shared with the ground that is going to your LEDs, you'll have troubles. Power supply, LED, and controller grounds all have to be together. I think people have had trouble with that. So just explaining one more time. Now, the way I've got it connected, because inside here, these grounds are shared. So effectively, that's what I've got. If your grounds are not shared or if something's not working, just try making, try connecting this to the ground there, and that should be equal. So there you go, they're working, right? Working, working, working. Now I wanna try something else. I'm actually gonna take this ground wire off of here and I'm gonna put it on the 12 volt side. Shouldn't make a difference. Should work either way. All right, turn it back on. There you go. Samesies. The grounds have to be all common. They have to be all connected together. And that's what they are right now. They are all on one screw terminal. Ground from the LEDs, ground from the controller and ground from the power supply are all connected to the same screw. That's important. Was that helpful? So another thing that a lot of people asked is about splitting the data. They say, how many, how many strings can I run off of one node MCU? If you're using something like ESP Home or Tasmoda, I think you can do more than one pin. But the way WLED is written, as of right now, you can only use one pin. That means this controller will send one signal out to say, LEDs do this. And it's, and it's a linear signal. It's one line. It's going to go in order. LED number one, you do this. LED number two, you do this. LED number three, you do that. Okay. And it goes down to however many LEDs you tell it. And it just runs that effect. That's it. You, so you can't say, I want a different LED number one to do a different effect. You can split that signal and run that same signal to two strips but those two strips will do the exact same thing. They will, be, they will run the identical effect all the way down the line. And you can, in fact, you could do that probably, I don't even know how many times. You, maybe we can experiment with that. I've got six strings of LEDs here. Let's do that. I think for practical purposes, for most of us that are actually putting things on our house, we're not designing like making a matrix on the side of a skyscraper or something. You're not gonna run into a limit of splits. And as I showed at the beginning here, if you run a thousand LEDs in a row, you just make sure you've got the right power connections so that you don't end up melting a small, small wire along the way because you very possibly could. Dun, 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 dun. This wire's getting frayed. <laughs> I've twisted this wire together so many times it just feels all frayed and thin. Like butter scraped over too much bread. <laughs> This is five strings of LEDs. I've got one data line coming from D4 and it's going to five different other jumper wires. So basically I've just split what's coming from D4 five times and I'm sending each signal to each LED strip. So as far as the uh, controller knows, what we should do here is change this to 150. Okay, that's good. 
So my LED strip is set to 150. That's correct. This was set to 150 and I had these LEDs hooked up in a uh, series and I had 750 in series. Only the first 150 would light up. This is going to show that this, these are actually all doing the same effect. Turn them on and they're all doing color winkle. So now we need to do an effect where it's like a, a run or something that is uh, flowing. Let's do lighthouse. So now you get a better idea that they're all doing the same thing, right? So as far as the controller is concerned, the controller thinks there are, there's one strip of 150 LEDs. I just split that signal that it's sending five times. When somebody says, how many LEDs can you run off of one node MCU? Well, there's no limit to how many times you can split it. We kind of been talking about that, but it's, they're all going to do the same thing. There's only one pin can send one signal. You can split that signal, but one pin can just run one signal. Okay. That was a long time getting around to that point. Hope it was worth it. So for those of you just tuning in, we've got node MCU hooked up to a very, very long wire here. It's probably 20 feet or something. And that's what's running our data. So the data line goes from here into the LEDs and it's a really, really long data line. So that voltage is going to be really low. And look at my effect. You see that? It looks like garbage. That's not what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Let's go back here. Let's run through some experiments. Let's just go to solid. It's supposed to be solid, right? I hit solid. I didn't hit blink or flicker or anything. It's supposed to be solid and it's not even capable of doing solid. And look at that flickering. When you change effects, it flickers like that. Okay. So this length is definitely too long. I'm going to try it at four feet now or thereabouts, much shorter, same problem. Yeah. Still doing the same thing. This is half the length that it was before. So four feet's too much. Now using thin wires is probably a little uh, worse, right? If, Cause I mean, if I use these thin little jumper wires, that's going to be worse because that'll be even more resistant. So the voltage will drop even more. So now we've got one, two, three, four jumper wires. No, nope, still. Let's just shorten this. Let's take one of these out. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now it seems to be working. So I have found a length that is okay. It's hard to see what I've actually done here, but trust me, <laughs> I have one single, and this is actually a WS2811 pixel, five volt, and it's got its input data coming from the node MCU and it's right next to the node MCU. And then on the output side, that's this other green wire is what is going to this long wire, which goes way over here and around, 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 and plugs into the data on this strip of LEDs over here. In contrast to what we saw when we had this same wire hooked up directly from the node MCU to the first uh, LED with at a distance of several feet, in contrast to that, when we turn it on now with this sacrificial pixel in place, which is just acting as a voltage booster, uh, what we get now is exactly what we expect from our lights. We get all the colors. They actually work really well. I'm going to go to LED preferences and I'm going to say, skip the first LED. It's right in my ear. Skip the first LED. Save and reboot. Reboot required. Reboot required. Yep. Now my first LED is not turning on. Yay. First time every time. So there you go. So if you need to jump a gap, if you want to put your controller somewhere and then put your actual LED strip somewhere farther away, you can sacrifice a pixel to do that. So right now what we've got is just one pixel, but it doesn't matter if this was already a line of 500 pixels. We could still jump the gap from pixel number 500 to pixel number 501 could be really long. Now let's see how far we can get. <laughs> We've got our sacrificial pixel coming out of our sacrificial pixel, running 10 meters of 22 gauge wire and then into our LED strip again. So now we're going to see if turning on our LED strip gives us flickering or not. It does not. It looks perfect. 
So there you go. With a sacrificial pixel, you can easily go 10 meters. So let's try 20. Can I get some votes? Who thinks it's going to work? Raise your hand. It'll work or it'll explode. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. 20 meters. Using this kind of a pixel is nice because you it's wired. I've done this and actually this isn't bad. You, know, you put a little dab of solder on these things and you use these connectors from uh, that you get extras when you buy your uh, D1 minis and, and different things. With these kinds of the WS2811 strings that have these bulbs and stuff, they have wires. So it's easy enough to just, you know, twist a couple wires together and there you go. Should we dump straight 40? Should we just go straight to 40 meters? 40 meters, no problem. So what we need is um, more wire. <laughs> I've got wire. All right, we have 192 meters of wire between our sacrificial pixel and our string of LEDs. There is no way this is going to work. No way. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. 192 meters is too much. <laughs> okay. It doesn't like 152 meters. 80 meters. Ready, set, fire. Ah! That didn't work. <laughs> Here we are, 60 meters. Ready, set. No good with 60. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's like on the verge. It's like it wants to be okay, but it's not quite okay. 50. I know what you're saying. We could have figured this out if we would have just gone from 40 to 50 <laughs> instead of 40 to 192 and back. 50 meters. What is up with that? That reaction that we just got honestly made it me feel like there was like a loose strand somewhere doing something funny. No, oh, 40 works. There's one little flicker. Well, see those little flickers? If you do get a little flicker like that, just try connections. Well, that was fun. 40 is no problem. If you need to go any further than that, then, then rearrange your display somehow. Well, that's it for this live stream rewind. Hope that was helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. If you need help, or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description, or head over to Patreon, or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.